we are here with the University of Wisconsin men's, uh, superior I should say, men's golf coach Paul Everhart. Paul uh, led the Yellow Jackets to their first UMAC uh, championship last fall, an exciting playoff finish, and then uh, was able to um, lead the team in, in terms of participating in the Division III championship, represented the UMAC in um, great fashion at the D3 National Championship last uh, spring then. Uh, Paul, well, let's start there. Uh, first, thank you for uh, yep. sitting down and doing this with us. But let's start there. Uh, as a coach, it's always enjoyable, rewarding when you get to see your athletes um, have success, watch them uh, enjoy those experiences. Can you speak on what it was like from a coaching perspective, watching your team win the UMAC championship, an exciting playoff, and then uh, participating in the D3 championship? Yeah, I would say that, um, it, I mean, it was an unbelievable experience from start to finish. Um, you know, from the banquet standpoint, just feeling like you're treated um, at a pretty high level. Um, so I would, you know, kudos to the NCAA for that. But I, I think from a perspective as a coach, it was just watching your guys sort of embrace it and go from feeling like maybe we didn't quite belong yet and to, you know, like, okay, well, we're here. Let's see what we can do with it, make the most of it. Um, and use it as a growth experience, which um, was exciting because we got done, you know, when we didn't make the cut. But at the same time, all the guys and uh, were like, let's get back. Let's make sure that we come back next year um, and use it as a growth experience. And, you know, and from my perspective, you know, try to tweak our schedule a little bit to make sure that we're playing um, maybe at a little bit, not say a higher level, but, you know, sometimes adding a couple more competitive events in. Um, just to try to push our guys to continue to try to have that growth mentality. And I think that that's, that was the, probably the most exciting piece of it other than just the sheer experience for our team. Sure, sure. And we identified obviously your program's having success now. Uh, what's, what's one characteristic that you, as you look at successful programs, sports, maybe you know, it's any sport, but um, that you believe is, is important to have a characteristic, a trait of a, a successful team? For me, it's always been um, trust, and you know I think you can build, you know, off of trust as that foundation. If your players trust in you, um, they know that you have that you support them, that there's a um, a relationship there that you've built or cultivated over time. They um, are willing to almost do anything for you to come out and work their tails off to try to. Um, achieve success and I think that that um, has been a huge piece of my growth process from day one to, to today um, is to kind of really learn how to cultivate relationships and make sure that there's a mutual trust there on both sides I trust them to you know go out and perform at a high level and to do things the right way and then they know that if there's any questions or things like that to come up that I'm there to support them. And that's how I've really tried to build um, m my philosophy throughout, I would say, the 20 or so years that I've been coaching. Um, but it's really kind of been the foundation for everything I've done. Sure, sure. And you mentioned now uh, coaching two decades, 20 years. Uh, how are you different now in terms of coaching 20 years later? Uh, you know, as you look back, uh, what stands out of, of just what you've learned over that time and how you coach perhaps differently now? Yeah, so I would say um, I'm probably a little bit less fiery, a little bit less, in, you know, intense. I started, you know, I, I spent a year as a junior varsity um, basketball coach. Um, and then from there, my next head job was um, at Scottsdale Community College in Arizona. So I'm coaching junior college men's basketball. And by nature, that junior college tends to be a little bit more, um, I would say less structured and some of those types of things. And so I was, I was probably, and the guy that I worked for before was very intense. And so I think some of that um, intensity carried over my first um, few years. I think that once I kind of settled into myself and my own philosophy, I started to, um, not that I'm still not intense because that, I don't want people to think that that's not, I'm when we're playing or when we're competing, I'm still intense, but just the outward intensity um, has has managed to simmer down sure. quite a bit in the last 20 years. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I think having kids and, um, 
you know, having three daughters and those types of things have all, you know, helped to help to drop that, to that, drop that a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yep. I would say that's probably the thing for me that sure. uh, has been. I'm just a little bit more laid back than sure. I probably was um, when I first got started. Sure, that's great. And sometimes it's uh, said that the journey to the tab can be much different than once you arrived at the tab. Sustaining that, keeping that going. Uh, now that your men's golf program has uh, won a conference championship, competed at the national level, uh, certainly want to keep going and advancing the program. But uh, how is it different now from a leadership perspective, trying to sustain that success and, and continue it? You, you obviously have some big um, athletes coming back in terms of key parts, players from last year. But how do you keep that going and, and sustain that success? So I think first thing is to try to sustain success, especially in the men's golf, it would be recruiting. If you don't, if I'm not out recruiting, um, it's going to be difficult for me to sustain. So I would say, you know, as a coach, in order to sustain a certain level, you have to go out and recruit. You can't rest on your laurels. Um, but reality for me, um, to grow as a coach and to, you know, try to continue to grow our program, um, I do a lot of reading uh, as far as and I wouldn't say just you know just leadership books or those types of things, but I because I do read those. But at the same time, I think just reading in general gives you a sense of um, it just widens your horizons. Yeah. And so I think for me, um, I try to read um, just about every night. Um, I try to put the social media and the, the electronics away, and I try to read a little bit before bed. It usually helps me relax and, and fall asleep. But the other thing. Um, I think I've tried to do is find, um, you know, I coached basketball for a number of years also, and so I always look at what some of the younger coaches are doing or trying to do, um, you know, so that I'm trying to stay fresh and, and updated and not lose or rest on, okay, well, I don't know everything um, or pretend I know everything because I surely don't. So I try to look at what younger coaches are doing um, to potentially rejuvenate um, things and make sure that um, as, a, as a coach I'm growing still and um, it's been really easy in, in all honesty for me because um, I've had great players um, not only basketball guys but also now having the last four years having golf play our golf players I guess um, uh, and those guys help to keep you younger and, and sure. more um, motivated to, to achieve success because you develop, like I said, a relationship with them and that relationship helps to keep you motivated to help them grow um, and th then not only you grow yourself as well. Sure, sure. Well, we'll be excited to watch the UW Superior Men's Golf Program continue to reach new levels of success. Paul, the reigning UMAC Coach of the Year for Men's Golf and the Yellow Jackets will try to make it back-to-back -back conference titles here this fall. So thank you for sitting down today. Appreciate you your bet. time. Thank you.